Well, good morning, YouTube, and welcome back to Retired for Life. So today we've actually got a bit of sun. Uh, so Sarah and I have already been out for our walk, so it is time to get down to work. I wanna take these logs up to the log bunk. I've got one that has got a couple of pretty big knobs on it that uh, will make it awkward on the sawmill. So I'm gonna take the chainsaw to that first. So we'll get the tractor warmed up and start getting them up to the log bunk. All right, folks, we got everything up here now. This is the uh, worst one of the bunch. Even though it's a big log, it's got this curve in it. And from my limited experience uh, sawmilling, I have found that uh, logs with curves in them seem to have a fair bit of built up stress inside of them. And if you're cutting boards that are too small, your boards could end up warping pretty good because of all the stress that's in this log. Now it's got a couple of big knobs on it. There's one here that's sticking out and then this one here and I want to make it easier uh, on the sawmill to take care of this log so I think what I'm going to do is just get the chainsaw out and trim these two pieces off of it. It'll make it lighter and it will make it easier for maneuvering it on the saw. It is gonna be awkward because of the warp in it, but we'll do what we can with it. So the same thing as if I was putting this on the sawmill. I've got a fair bit of dirt here on this side. So I'm gonna clean that off because I don't want to run my chainsaw chain through the middle of that, because that uh, would certainly shorten the life of the chain. So let's get that dirt off before we take the uh, chainsaw to it. All right, that's a lot better. So my main chainsaw is a 455 Rancher that has a 20 inch bar in it. Now, it's a great chainsaw, it's really worked well. It's probably a little bit underpowered for a 20 inch bar, but I'm not out there in production or anything like that. So this chainsaw has worked very well for me. Got no complaints about it. All right, let's see what we can do here.
was easy. That'll make it uh, a little better, I hope. Oh, I love a sharp chainsaw. Wow, this thing has got a wow in it. <laughs> you get it up here, you can really see it. I'm just trying to figure out the best way to take this down. Well, that's not bad. Now I just have to figure out how to hold it there. Okay, we'll get it figured out. Well, it'll be interesting to see how this cuts. So my target is gonna be one by eights from this. So we'll take some of the wow out here to start with. Well, I hope you guys have been enjoying today's video, and if you are enjoying it, I'd really appreciate the like, and I'd love to have you subscribe to the channel. And if you've got any suggestions, thoughts, anything like that, I'd love to hear from you. All right, let's get back to work. So that gives us our first flat surface. Now I have to roll this thing.
It is a beautiful looking log. Once I get that curve out of it. So we'll keep working away at it and uh, see what happens here. So these ugly logs are by far the most challenging, but it is also where you learn the most. I mean, how do you deal with curves? How do you deal with big knots, that kind of thing? And how do you get it to sit still on the bed when you're pretty much as wide as the bed? So, they take a lot of time, but it is interesting. And they are heavy. Ooh. Look at that, we're perfect. All right, yeah, it actually won't be long before we have a nice looking cat here. So you can see here we got a nice pretty much full size on both ends and all of about six inches in the middle. Well, that's okay, we're taking it down a bit at a time, trying to save as much of it as we can. Let's roll it again. I've got a little bit that's going to be underneath this on these two bunks, so I'll have to move it around to make sure I get it off of that or I won't be square. So what I like to do is pull the log back to the edge of the uh, bunk here so that anything that's come off of the corner will hang over the edge of the bunk and then I push it back and that just scrapes it out of the way. And then you're sitting properly again. No rock, no nothing. All right, we cut the low side, let's cut the high side. All right, so we've just about got a usable cant now. So I need to figure out what I can do with it. This knot here is just killing me. It's really bad and it's in a terrible spot, but we'll trim down to our eight inch and then flip up. And I know from here down, we've got good boards. All right, so we're down to our eight inch thickness now. I gotta roll this a couple of times because I want this face down. Got 
got to be so careful of where your fingers are when you're dealing with this stuff. That coming down on your finger would really hurt. I want to show you this before I cut any farther. So you can see what I was meaning when I was talking about stress built into the log. See this right here? Look at how much that board has come off of there already. Yeah, there is some stress in that log. All right, let's keep cutting. So I got to ask myself sometimes when I get a log like that, is it worth it? For the most part, if it's not filled with knots, it can be worth it. I mean, this, this piece of it, this part is fairly clear. I've got one here, but I'll be past that. Uh, and it is from that point, a pretty nice board. And the warping isn't terrible. So, is still worth it. The other thing you want to keep in mind with a log like this that's got a bend in it, I would not try to make two by sixes or two by fours or anything like that out of it. As you can pretty much guarantee your two by fours or two by sixes are going to be pretty badly warped. And as I say with this for siding, that warp is really not going to affect too much. But two by fours and two by sixes, that would be a real pain. Well, folks, I decided I uh, pretty much had to stop. I needed to change that blade. It was just starting to give me a, a rough finish. And the other thing I noticed is it almost felt like the blade was skipping a little bit. And the drive belt was a little bit on the loose side. So I tightened that up as well. So we are ready to go again, but we're going to put things away for today and we'll get back at it again tomorrow. So I hope you have found this video about dealing with a bent slash warped log interesting. I'm not sure which way I would go to calling this. I, I, I would lean towards calling that log bent, not warped. To me, warping is something that happens to your lumber after it's been cut, you know, and left to dry, uh, then your lumber will warp. That log that we uh, were dealing with, to me, was bent. It happened through the natural process of the tree growing, for whatever reason. There's a hundred different things that can cause that. Uh, it can be as simple as some damage to the side of the tree, or something getting in the way as it's growing up, getting tangled up in other trees, they still find their way to go up, even though they have to go around things. So I would call that bent, not necessarily warped. What do you guys think? Would you call a, a log like that bent or warped? Anyway, we're gonna put things away for today. I hope you found the video interesting, or at the very least a little bit entertaining. If you did, I'd really appreciate the like, and don't forget to share it around if there are other people you think that might find it interesting. And I'd love to have you subscribe to the channel. That would really help. So for now, remember to stay safe out there, be good to each other, and we will see you out on the trails the next time. Well, there's something I wasn't planning on finding. Whoa.